I was privileged some months ago to be in Jamaica um, and met a film crew from the Netherlands. They were there to film a documentary uh, titled The Legacy of Slavery. Now, as we know, the legacy of slavery is, you know, racism, injustice, inequality, and all that goes with it. So this was their focus, and right up my alley. One of the journalists uh, among the team, Nina Juma, yes, is her name, she showed me a snippet of a work that she did, a research she did about some of the freedom fighters, the heroes and sheroes that helped to emancipate I and I, to liberate I and I, to free I and I from the shackles of slavery. It was, I pride myself as being a history student, you know, especially when it comes to slavery, you know, and our struggle, the Caribbean heroes and so forth. But some of the information that she shared was the first for me. It moved me to the point of asking her if I could use her research as part of this event. Now you'll be privileged to see some of her work as we continue the evening. Yes, Ras Jabalani, if thanks. During the Black Lives Matter protests in 2020, I, um, I saw all these uh, statues of uh, European oppressors, people like Columbus, pulled down or destroyed, thrown in the water. And um, it was an, um, an example of uh, uh, get rid of what they symbolize, um, enslavement, uh, colonialism. And I remember that during my travels in the Caribbean for my work as a journalist, I'm always very happy when I see um, black statues, statues of black freedom fighters. And I started to um, write that down on Twitter and I started uh, a thread and I wrote, when I traveled for my work to the Caribbean, I'm always happy to see many interesting and beautiful statues like the great Toussaint Louverture in Haiti. And um, I included a picture of his statue. And um, you see Toussaint Louverture with a very uh, proud face looking over the horizon. Um, he was one of the, well, maybe the most important freedom fighter for Haiti and later for all the Caribbean. Uh, Haiti uh, fought, the enslaved people fought against, um, against the army of Napoleon and they won. And that is the start of the independence of uh, Haiti. And then uh, I saw, I received a lot of likes, more than 200, more than... Um, 85 retweets. Um, so I started to, to, to put some more of our black leaders. And the second one was Zumbi. Zumbi is the big uh, freedom fighter in Brazil, where I live. Uh, he was the leader of the Quilombo de Palmares. And the Quilombo de Palmar Palmares was, um, it was actually, uh, uh, we know that from the oral history, it was, it was like a town of, of um, uh, enslaved people who ran away from the plantations and freed themselves and lived in the interior of Brazil in the north and started their own community. And uh, we know that Palmares existed for more than 100 years and uh, Zumbi was uh, one of the last, uh, the last leader. Um, he is very important for the history of the black history of, of Brazil. and. And there's a beautiful statue in uh, Salvador, which is also a black city of Brazil. And uh, you see him uh, with his um, very powerful face on the statue um, with a spear and um, like a real fighter. And I include his statue in 
the thread and again this went uh, viral and so I started uh, to put all the important leaders and the statues of them just to um, to focus on the statue, the good statues and the powerful statues instead of the statues of um, the oppressors. I also included uh, my own uncle from Suriname, where my roots are uh, from my mother's side, uh, Louis Doodle, who was the first um, uh, union leader in Suriname. Uh, this was during during the colonial uh, repression of the, the Dutch, and he was um, put in a mental institution for that because he, for, he struggled for freedom. And he was put uh, 43 years in this institution, but actually was a jail. Um, so uh, since uh, 2013, there's a, there's a statue in Suriname um, for him um, to remember him and his, uh, his, uh, his work. He organized uh, demonstrations against uh, the Dutch uh, colonists. And then uh, I put some very, very important females, female freedom fighters in the threads in the, on Twitter. And um, I was so happy to find a uh, very beautiful statue of Solitude, who was a, a, a woman in Guadeloupe, an African woman. And she was uh, born on, uh, that's the, the oral history we know, she was born in, in Guadeloupe after her mother, uh, who uh, was put on the boat from West Africa to uh, the Caribbean, was raped on the, on the ship. Um, and probably by uh, a captain or, or some of the crew, white crew members of this uh, ship, because uh, solitude, according to the oral history, is um, was uh, uh, light skin, had also green eyes, um, and therefore her position, they they put her uh, in the household, not on the on the field. Uh, to work, so she was close to the uh, uh, slave owner's family, but um, um, she decided to run away from the plantation while she was became pregnant because she didn't want her baby also became enslaved. Because of course we know that uh, when uh, a woman um, gave birth, also the the child would be become a slave. So she ran away from the plantation and she um, participated in the, in the big army of freedom fighters, uh, African freedom fighters in Guadeloupe um, against the French, um, who during Napoleon time re uh, insulate the, um, uh, the slavery after the, uh, as I told you, after the freedom fight in Haiti, it was uh, from Louverture. Uh, they quit with, uh, with slavery in all the French colonies, but during uh, Napoleon, it was, um, they started over again with it. So, um, Solitude was a part of this uh, army of freedom fighters. Um, at the end, she was caught by the French. Um, she was at that time maybe six, seven months pregnant. And... Um, it was a horrible thing they did to her. They, she had to, uh, they waited uh, when she gave birth to her baby and then they killed her um, on, a, on a horrible way. Um, she was tortured and then killed and, and the baby she gave birth to was enslaved. And that was of course uh, very painful because she didn't want that. That's the way, that's why she ran away from uh, the plantation. She wanted the freedom for her baby. And that's very important for us, for me as a female also. Also, I put in uh, on Twitter the very, very important story of uh, Lokai. And Lokai was, um, um, she was an, um, an African woman who was uh, uh, born in, in the Caribbean island of St. Martin, who, which is still a part of the Dutch kingdom, St. Martin. St. Martin is an island and you have two parts. You have the French part, Saint Martin, and you have the Dutch part, Saint Martin. Although they speak English, it's still part of the Dutch kingdom. And at that time, um, uh, Lokai, she was, um, she, she wanted to, uh, she looked for her freedom. So she ran away from the plantation and it's an island. It's not so easy to, to, uh, to escape and to, 
to stay in freedom on an island. So um, they caught her and as a punishment uh, for the escaping, for escaping the plantation, her one of her breasts was cut off. And that's why she, bega- uh, she, she got this name, one tete lokai. One tete is, mean, means one breast and lokai is her name. So she, uh, in her, she had one breast. Um, of course, uh, this was a, a very cu- cruel thing the slave master did. Um, but she was cured with medicine plants and, and, and herbs by uh, other female, uh, females on the plantation, African uh, women. So she was uh, recovered. Uh, she recovered and then she decided to escape again because she really was looking for freedom. So she escaped again and um, this time she succeeded. She, she, she went to the hills of uh, St. Martin. She got help from other escaped slaves uh, and slave people. And, um, and then she, she became a hero because she started to help others also um, to escape from the plantations. We know also uh, a story of uh, three females, Mary, Agnes and Matilda, and they are known uh, as the queens of the Virgin Islands who uh, led a revolt in 1887 known as the Fire Burn. They started uh, they started to, um, uh, with their uh, 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 lamps, they go, they passed houses and, uh, and plantations. And that was like uh, the start of a, of a very huge uh, revolt. And they started it and people participate in it. And uh, these three women, uh, the queens of Virgin Islands, as they are known, um, they have a very nice statue in uh, in the Virgin Islands, and you see them with their dresses, um, and you see also that if I see them in these dresses, I see that they were like uh, working also on the plantations as as maids or enslaved in a household, and started from inside this revolt. And a lot of people, they start they they participate in this uh, very important revolt in um, in uh, Virgin Islands. Um, we have, um, of course, uh, that's what very nice was when I, I, I started this um, investigation, this research in all this statue. Uh, of course, there's a lot of uh, male statues, like, um, yeah, we have um, also the Saline, the, the very, very important freedom fighter um, in Haiti, who um, started this fight against Napoleon and, and also, um, defeated the Napoleon army and started the, the independence in Haiti. But there is also this very important uh, female fighter from your country, from um, Jamaica. And when I started this research, I didn't even know she existed. And I am so happy that I uh, discovered Nanny of the Maroons. Um, it's an amazing story how uh, how a female an African woman who um, who was kidnapped from Africa and enslaved, and but but she came the most well, almost the most important freedom fighters in 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 the Caribbean, I think, maybe the most female important female fighter against the British colonists. Um, as, as she she was the head of a, a whole. Uh, army of freedom fighters in in Jamaica. Um, I think it's it's amazing what she did and uh, that she uh, she lives in the mountains and then there she also that became this home base from the Maroons. And when I was in um, Jamaica, I was so happy to see <laughs> that she's on the money and that she's a, a national hero. I think that uh, it's a great example what Jamaica did. Um, for the rest of the Caribbean, where, uh, uh, for example, in Suriname, where my family is from, we, there's still no statue uh, of the big um, Bonnie, the freedom fighter Bonnie, or his mother who gave birth to him uh, in the forest because she ran away from the plantation while pregnant. And so Bonnie was uh, born in freedom, but we still don't have um, a statue for them. 
which is, uh, I think, shameful. And so for me, Jamaica is a, is a, a huge example the Emancipation Park, where there's this beautiful statue of Nanny, Nanny on the money, uh, on, on bills. So you always, uh, you are in touch with her. So I think that's, that's it's very good what Jamaica did. It's an example. Um, also, I, um, I included uh, some beautiful statues we have in Salvador, in uh, Salvador de Bahia, which is uh, the most African uh, state in Brazil. And the Orishas, that are the, the, the spirits, the African spirits who were brought by the enslaved Africans to Brazil. Um, and these Orishas are very powerful and very important in Brazil. And we have uh, some beautiful statues of them. And in Salvador, you see them, you have a lake with all the all the Orishas and it's a, it's a it's a very spiritual place if you go there and you sit there by the lake you really feel the the the, the power of the of the spirits by these statues I think that statues like uh, yeah, from the oppressors like Columbus it can give a negative uh, uh, influence for a society because it's like we glorify them uh, on the other hand, um, the statues of the fighters, of the freedom fighters, gives energies and give good energy, it gives good spirits. So therefore, I think it's, it's, it, it also was for me important to talk about the, the black statues we have in our region better than to um, focus on the, the statues of Columbus who were destroyed. So that's, that was the meaning of my, um, my post on Twitter. And I'm really happy that it, this went viral in the Netherlands and also other places. And uh, after that, I wrote an article about it. And um, I also interviewed people from the different countries, what the statues mean for them. I mean, if you pass by, if you see them, how um, powerful it is better than to focus on the statues of the colon colonists we we still have also unfortunately in the caribbean um uh, like i saw in in trinidad and tobago uh, in the middle of the of uh, port of spain you have the statue of columbus at this moment uh it's destroyed they cut off his hands and uh, and and they destroyed it but they keep it there and uh, I spoke to one of the activists and he said to me, well, we, we wanted to keep it destroyed, half destroyed um, in this way to see that this was not a hero, but he was a criminal. And this, what, this is what we did to him. And so in the center of Port of Spain, you have now this uh, destroyed uh, uh, statue of Columbus. They cut off his hands and his feet and put uh, paint on him. Um, so that's the example of the feelings to how people get feeling of their hate for the for this uh, uh, criminal of uh, Columbus. Um, but my focus is more on the the great heroes we have in the Caribbean and their statues. And also, I think it's very important that we discover more and more of the stories. Therefore, I was really um, happy that you in Jamaica have uh, have a queen, have a have a queen of the Maroons, have uh, um, have someone who who was a leader of a, of a whole group of Maroons. Um, here she is, your own national hero, and I think it's an example to that you also named her and gave her the title of national heroes. Um, I'm, I'm a little bit sad that in Suriname, where my roots are, where my family is from, that there's still no statue for uh, a Bonnie, who is a national hero, who was also a maroon. Um, there is no statue for him. So it's about time. I'm thankful that there's many of the maroons. And um, it was I was also so happy when I was in Jamaica to see that she's on money to see that she's in the National Park, in the Emancipation Park, and that she's everywhere. You cannot, uh, I mean, all the tourists 
who come to uh, Jamaica, maybe for the music, for the famous Bob Marley, maybe for the beaches, they, as soon as they have money in their hands and they pay, they have nanny in their heads. So that's, that's very good. I really like that. I think that it's very important that we know about these this, uh, uh, heroes. There's a long list of them. And uh, every day I discover more. I mean, today, as we talk, I was um, working on an article about uh, the elections in, uh, in Colombia. As we know that there is a new government and there is the, the first black female vice president, uh, Francia Marquez. And she's a, she's a black female. She was, uh, is from the Cauca, from a very poor region. But it's a region where also um, uh, Afro-Colombian uh, uh, communities are. And, and I, was, I, um, I was reading about a little bit about the history. And then I was happy to see that also Colombia has, has fighters, has heroes who escaped from uh, slavery. I think it's so important that we know that our narrative is not only punishments and, and slavery, it's, it's heroes, it's female fighters, like, like Nanny, like Solitude, like uh, Lokai, um, and that's only three, there's, there's more, but I don't, know, I don't have time for that, maybe in the, in the next chapter. Um, look at her face, amazing, so powerful, and I, and I really like um, the statue because when I see this, I think, yeah, I saw these kinds of, uh, of women. I saw them in Jamaica. I saw these um, features, you know, so that's I really like about it. It's so um, realistic. And I was also very happy to meet um, uh, in Jamaica when we went there for the documentary. I met powerful uh, female um, uh, maroon, like Mama G, Mama Fire, who are still fighting for um, the their roots and the culture. I think it's very important. And also how Jamaica embraced uh, their heroes. It's really an example. It's an example for me and also for the world. So um, yeah, here they are. Many of the maroons. One tete lokai. Let me see. Solitude.